can hold my body down. There ain't no grave can hold my body down. You see, there is a network called Fox Sports. And when you think of Fox Sports, you actually think of a fox playing sports. But instead of getting foxes with karate skills and blasters, we get dads with midlife crisis that has no credibility to cover sports, especially American football. You know, Doug was a show that I used to watch as a child, and I'm pretty sure a lot of children from the late 90s and early 2000s did too. And when you add the surname Gottlieb to the first name Doug, well, it is the equivalent of turning Fairy World into Pixie Incorporated. Doug Gottlieb is known for his biased takes and he is against any free thinker. He has a very old fashioned way of thinking and some people compare him to conservatives in politics, but I personally believe a true conservative is analytical and more scientific. When it comes to Mr. Doug Gottlieb, I truly believe that he thinks that he is smarter than what he is. He recently criticized Cole Beasley for his opinions on COVID-19 protocols. I think you guys have heard that Cole Beasley is out. He's in COVID protocols. Okay. So Cole took to Instagram. Of course, he's an anti-vaxxer. Ooh, he's an anti-vaxxer. Which is most of his teammates who are vaccinated are still playing, but he's got one who's in the hospital. That's the guy we're all we're doing all this for. So you're basically saying that Cole Beasley and all of his teammates should be vaccinated for that one guy who is in the hospital for the Buffalo Bills that has already supposed to have been vaccinated. Yeah, Doug, that seems pretty logical. You don't wear a mask for, for you and me or for the, you wear a mask so that people don't, more people don't get sick, more people aren't in the hospital so that people are really sick, get to go to the hospital and have space. Like, again, I'm, I, I'm, I'm not sitting there telling you like, they, I have all the answers. I do not. But you just acted like you had all the answers in this entire segment, and you made it seem like Cole Beasley was the bad guy for having his own opinion. Cole Beasley is a selfish dude. And all of you who are only looking at it from your own perspective and saying, well, you know, my shot, my body, you're, you're just selfish human beings. And it's probably not your fault. This is what we bred as a society. We have the iPhone, we have the Wii phone, right? YouTube, how about you? This guy talks about how we live in an arrogant society. He calls Cole Beasley selfish. Oh, the irony. Isn't your show called the Doug Gottlieb Show? I mean, that sounds like an arrogant title. Then you want to criticize Cole Beasley for having an opinion while using your opinion. Doug is the type of guy that would dip his hot dog in ketchup instead of pouring it on top. God, respectfully. Sheesh. Oh, that's him. So he basically tells Cole Beasley to get the vaccine to help everybody else out. But if everybody is vaccinated, then Cole Beasley not being vaccinated should only affect him. But, you know, there's too many contradictions. Now, I would talk about this segment longer, but every time you mention COVID-19 in a negative light, Ooh, he's an anti-vaxxer. Doug Gottlieb has so many bad takes that you can make a grocery list with them. I mean, remember the time in the preseason when Doug Gottlieb made the quarterback competition between Jameis Winston and Taysom Hill about race? I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that racism doesn't exist. Okay, I'm not gonna sit here and, you know, and, and try and tell you, but the narrative of the NFL or the narrative you will hear from many people in my position, especially at the quarterback position, is stuck in a foregone era. But you're told by people in my position that sports is somehow determined by your race. No, it's not. It's determined by your talent, your ability to lead, your sports aptitude, but plus, more than anything, can you help me win games? And are you not going to be in jail? Th those two things. I mean, come on. Who in America thought about race when it came to Jameis Winston competing with Taysom Hill for the starting job in the preseason? Nobody ever. Literally, Doug Gottlieb created racism 
out of something that was not even racist. But we all know that Doug is the type of guy that will tell you that he ended racism by eating fried chicken because black people eat it. And, and speaking of black people, let's see what Doug Gottlieb had to say about Travis Hunter joining a HBCU college. He has him ranked top five prospect going to Jackson State. And I pointed out that Twitter championing what's an obvious mistake is hilarious. And so when you start to talk about HBCUs, HBCU guy is like CrossFit guy, right? Like, you don't understand the benefits of CrossFit. Like, uh, uh, okay. You don't understand the benefits of an HBCU. Stop yelling in the mirror, dude. I am trying to get some sleep. Damn. If you want to be a big time athlete, you're going to have to go somewhere. They actually have a chance to compete and they're supported financially. They're supported with facilities, with doctors, with overall coaching staff and level of competition as well as level of promotion. You can tell that Doug Gottlieb is trying so hard to fit into society. I mean, he really thinks he is like Ben Shapiro. That all of the water levels around the world rise by, by let's say, five feet over the next hundred years, say 10 feet. You think that people aren't going to just sell their homes and move? Just one small problem. Sell their houses to who, Ben? Fucking Aquaman. And the bigger the alumni base, the more financially well supported they are, like, it's a mistake to choose Jackson State unless, like, your mom, your dad, everybody went there and, like, that's been your school, the, the, the whole... That's not the way this went down. One, for the children or the young teenagers that are watching this video, the NFL does not care about what college you come from. What matters is if you're coachable and if you have potential. Bo Jackson, Jerry Rice, Doug Williams, Shannon Sharp, Michael Strahan have all played at HBCUs. There are 34 HBCU Hall of Famers. What Doug Gottlieb has failed to realize is that Travis Hunter wants to learn from the best cornerback of all time. He is not going to an HBCU just for the sake of going to an HBCU. He wants to learn from the source. Like if Tom Brady coached at a D3 college, and I play quarterback in high school, I will go to that D3 college just because Tom Brady is the head coach. You wanna learn from the best of the best. You wanna pick their brains apart. It's kinda like when you learn from an ancient Kung Fu master. He does not always have a great dojo, but you don't come for the dojo, you come for the training. I believe that Deion Sanders would be a great mentor to Travis Hunter. I mean, it's not like Doug Gottlieb is helping this kid make tough life decisions. And I think that he forgets if Travis Hunter does not like where he is, I mean, he can always transfer. Hey, anybody need a punter? Punter? We're good. Oh, brought Dr. Pepper. Welcome, Welcome to state. state. Doug Gottlieb also had some things to say about college players making money off their name and likeness. Yeah, I saw Joe Burrow tweeted out. Well, this is great for the non-scholarship athlete. Who is going to pay money to a non-scholarship athlete for name, image, and likeness? Doug is the type of guy that will use a typewriter when he texts on his phone. He said that who is going to pay a non-scholarship athlete for his name, image, and likeness? I mean, Doug, do you remember the era that we are in? We are in the era of social media. It's about stories. It's about how you market yourself. Like, say the kid who did not have a scholarship had a very powerful story. Like, what if he takes a bullet for his teammate and he almost cost himself his life? Best believe the college would market off that story and they would pay for his name, image, and likeness. Or what if that player didn't have a scholarship, but he had cancer, but he was one of the best players on that team? Best believe the college would market that story and they would pay for that kid's name, image, and likeness. It's all about stories 
and how that kid is marketed. Let's look at some more of Doug Gottlieb's bad takes. So in this segment, Doug is talking about why Brandon Staley is more qualified as a head coach than Eric Bieniemy. I'm gonna play some sound here. Um, it's sound from Brandon Staley. Before I play it though, I, I want you to really listen and then what comes to your mind. Seth, look, here's Brandon Staley. What I think that the running game does for a quarterback is it gives you some breathers. And you don't need a good running game to be a good play action team, but what you need the running game for is the physical element of the game. There's a physicality to the game that's real, right? If you're just a passing team, okay, there's a physical element to the game that the defense doesn't have to respect, okay? Because the data will tell you, you don't need a run game to play pass. That's not, you don't need that. Okay, there's a, it's more than just being about like, hey, I like that guy. That's part of it. You got to be likable. They want, got to want to play for you. Um, Staley, of course, was a quarterback when he was in college. He started on the offensive side of the ball, moved to the defensive side of the ball. But there's a, a formula and a plan and a thought that goes into what he does, how he does it, and why he does it. And then he has the ability to articulate it, not just to us, but also to the team. Doug Gottlieb is the type of dude that will pour whipped cream on ice and call it ice cream. This was, yet again, a terrible analysis by Doug Gottlieb. So Doug Gottlieb is basically saying that the reason why Eric Bieniemy is not a head coach and Brandon Staley is, is because that Brandon Staley can articulate his points and he seems to have more of a structure. And he acts like Eric Bieniemy does not possess that. But that obviously does not make any sense because you can't judge a coach based on how he acts in front of a podium. Because remember Nick Sirianni? Nick Sirianni looked like he had no plan. Next thing that's very important to me is that we build a smart football team. That we have a smart football team here. And I know we have the, the people in place to do that. The first part of that, the first part of being smart is knowing what to do. We're going to we're gonna know, we're going to have systems in place that you um you had you 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 could you do you you want you you could are easier to learn all right complicated to the defense or offense that they're going against or the special teams group they're going against but easy for us to learn because when we can put that because we when we can learn our system and we can get good at our system then our talent can take over what the f what the f i mean i think we all remember Nick Sirianni's plant analogy. You know, the results aren't there right now, but what's going on here is is that there's growth under the soil. I, I, I put a picture of a, a flower up, right? And that it's and it's coming through the ground and the root. Basically, when Doug Gottlieb tries to pretend that the reason that Eric Bieniemy does not have a head coaching gig is because he looks like he has no plan or structure or he doesn't articulate his points, I mean, that's bogus because we do not know what happens behind closed doors when it comes to these owners and these NFL executives interviewing these coaches. We can only speculate. Plus, I think Eric Bieniemy is pretty comfortable as the offensive coordinator for the Kansas City Chiefs because Kansas City has a great infrastructure. But you know, I expect nothing from Doug Gottlieb especially when he tries to defend Urban Meyer when he got fired from the Jacksonville Jaguars after 13 games. The thing that's killing Urban Meyer the worst is not the football decisions. It was what happened in the bar in Ohio, not catching the team playing, getting hammered, flirting with a chick. Like, like all, of that, all of that stuff, all that stuff hurts all the other messaging. The football things, like, those will work out. I love how people are you know, critical of Urban Meyer. And like, what did you expect to happen? A guy comes in with a completely different way of doing things. Did you think everybody was going to go, sure, Urban, we'll do it that way? No. And the ones that push back too much and they're not good enough, they'll be gone. Coaches, players, doesn't matter. Man, Doug, you are so hypocritical. It's hilarious. You are the same guy that praised Brandon Staley for being articulate and structured. Remember, 
This is Brandon Staley's first year as a head coach. And by putting Brandon Staley on a pedestal, you made it look like Eric Bieniemy would be an incompetent head coach. But you defend Urban Meyer, a head coach that burned his entire bridge with the Jacksonville Jaguars organization. I mean, when your own quarterback says that there will be clarity and direction moving forward after Urban Meyer got fired, what does that tell you about Urban Meyer? I mean, come on, Doug. Are you tone deaf? Like, you are talking about the Jacksonville Jaguars rebuilding, but how can you rebuild when every time you stack a brick, you tear it down? Cinder block right here. I'm gonna use this one right here. I'm gonna place this one. What the fuck, man? What the fuck is wrong with you, bro? We don't care. We don't care.